but the, the, the gift of living together as brothers, the lift of living as, as a married couple who's trying to be faithful with their kids or having good friends around or, or whatever community or communion we are into is that we want to keep each other before this place. And we want to keep each other constantly asking the question, how is the father pouring himself out? How is he blessing? How is he caring for me? So I can constantly be looking up and say, father, look at what you've done. Like father innocent this morning, but like he's looking around and seeing these guys put on their habits. Like father, like, look at this. And you, your reference to the sisters earlier and you're like, we all have these moments. You're like, whoa, but that shouldn't be kind of like one in every once in a while kind of moment. Mm-hmm. How can we live, have a, have a heart that's full of recollection and full of grace to see differently and to enter into that space? Like, yeah, I think it's the, I think that's the invitation. I think that's the point. And that's what maybe Jesus is trying to teach us. The exactly. best place is, this is what we call prayer. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey. I'm Father Innocent. Father Angelus. And this is yeah, a podcast. <laughs> uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you. To the Poco a Poco podcast. Father Mark Mary, I just want to and thank you for your constant presence here. Father Angelus, thank you for making a commitment to at least two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Father P- Pierre Toussaint. Thank you for nothing. Thanks for being in summer camp. <laughs> Continues to run summer camp. Where would you rather be, here or summer camp? To be honest. I've never been a summer camp kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure that hasn't shocked many people. <laughs> I Can I tell a story of a summer camp recent or not recently? This was a very long time ago. I just thought about it recently. Mm-hmm. And I told the story about my own wounds and insecurities. Ange and I were at a summer camp, basketball camp. He made the all-star team and I didn't. I do remember that story. And, I do you remember that And story. it was a tough experience for me where you were in your glory and I was sitting by mom. What would you like for me? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like for me in this moment? <laughs> but this is where you put your hand on my shoulder and kind of attempt no. to console me. No? Stupid but, camp. It was a stupid camp. It didn't mean anything. I know. It meant some, but it but meant for my 10 year old heart, I was an absolute failure. That was me getting reject. angry. That was me getting angry on your, it didn't on work. Your <laughs> it didn't work. That wasn't, I didn't, I just, it, it, it didn't work. Were there, are there any like similar experiences, but reversed? Oh, uh, come to this mind? is fun. Um, I, I kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. He was the lead in every high school musical he was ever in. And you were the I, I about this. I was the ensemble. <laughs> How's that? This is the story of my life. Bro, I was born you're... two minutes behind him, ordained two years behind but him. But the ensemble has an important role. I'm very happy with the ensemble. <laughs> I have like, yeah, that's kind of my, my role here on, on, Poco a poco. I'm very ensemble like, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Thank you. There's only three of us. I don't think you count as an ensemble. Yeah, you are the vocation director of the Franciscan Fires and Renewal. That's not an ensemble role. That's true. That's true. That is true. So, Father Angelus, let's put the spotlight on you. Okay. If you <laughs> were fun. to ask for someone, to donate to the Poco Poco podcast. <laughs> what, what might that look like? Well, it's important because it's, we're all a community here, right? Everybody <laughs> does their part. So they, you know. We uh, ask for donations to help our friends at Spirit Juice. Uh, so that's We want to pay Chris. He's our... Yep. Hi, Chris. And we're grateful to our <laughs> camera guys, producers, and uh, Rob at Spirit Juice. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, but uh, their website is escaping me at the moment. <laughs> Spirit on juice <laughs> forward slash dot org forward slash poco yeah, poco. Yeah, what might it. somebody do at that website? Go to the donate <laughs> button. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah. we're doing actually really uh, all seriousness. Very grateful people are donating, and that's cer- certainly helpful to Rob and his people. And it certainly keeps hopefully this, yeah, this it'll be helpful so to us as well. People can be intentional about that. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And we're grateful. Yeah, for that. it's be it's helpful to us as well. Um, and already has become very helpful. The just a reminder that when we ran Catholic Underground, this was Father Angelus's thing. We had to ask for donations to make that thing I run. remember that. That was my main job. You're kind of like, a, you were you, working you, the crowd. Remember that whole credit yeah. card thing? And it wasn't like we need somebody to do it. It was like, Father Angelus. Is this guy. your way of kind of trying to bring me in and kind of give me it a It was just true. Card. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that because it was like, oh, who's going to do it? Because you did it for like three or four years. Who's going to do it? I think all, all four years of seminary did it. That was funny. Yeah. 
It was like begging for money at the end of the night. It's that that capacity to Shoes. just reach reach through the microphone and grab their elbow. And <laughs> make we need your help. Encourage. Remember the credit card thing you used to do? Like, hey, if you can leave credit card just numbers, make sure to leave your pen. Just the right. <laughs> <laughs> or the security guard in the back. Very yeah, important. Just the right about. <laughs> exactly. All right. Enough. Enough of that. Nobody likes Franciscans talking about money. You know. How's your coffee? What are you doing there? You guys have two I didn't know. Cups. I was like trying to like not be awkward. I couldn't figure it out. It was like a... Because you guys need coffee and it's been sitting the thing all day. It's yummy. Maxwell House. <laughs> well, now that we are... what? Oh, I Father, so. this, today is a big day in the Friary. Today is fitting day for the postulants. That's do you a big call, deal. Do you call we it call it fitting day. day. I mean, I call it like, yeah, habit fitting day. Um, This is probably one of like the most exciting, my fav- one of my favorite days of postulancy. You were in the room. I kind of well up as a father as we were coming in for a landing. The Poshlands have three days left in the Friary. Um, I'm just going to give dates. They move out the 14th and July 21st, they will be officially inhabited with the habit of St. Francis. So that's like a big deal. Mm-hmm. And so today was a really beautiful day because um, not long before they leave, we, we brother Colby had, had, has made the habits, right? And so we put them on for the first time and they get fitted in their cincture and we tie the knots and we burn the ends and we have, we, we put the rosary on for the first time. And I teach them how to put the habit on, take it off, like do all the, like the secret friar things of wearing a habit. And so it's a really beautiful fatherly moment for me as we've been waiting like all year, we've done this like 10 and a half month, 11 months journey. And this is we're, we're at the end. And, and this is just a beautiful culmination where they're going to be, they're going to wear the habit. And so it's a really beautiful moment. And I, it's just being able to teach them and, and we, I have this really beautiful moment because you're so used to them wearing like white shirt, gray pants, this cross. They're, they just totally look odd. Mm-hmm. Let's just be, be real. All you posh moms out there, we know your sons look weird. Um, <laughs> but they're about to look really normal. But <laughs> we're moving in that direction of lo- looking less normal. Um, we're, we're, we're putting on a medieval garment, you know. Right. That's, but it's beautiful because they put it on for the first time and they get fitted and we do everything. And you're like, you look so, that you're like made for this. Like mm-hmm. this looks so in a way natural on you. So there's something that just moves my heart about this. And, and these guys are excited. They're ready. And um, so it's a, it's a beautiful moment for me, but then it's like the, the, the turning of this chapter, you're like, Whoa, like in three days, these guys will move on. And, and uh, there's something beautiful, some, something so beautiful about it. But then just also I'm like, man, oh man, like there's something beautiful about these guys, Mm -hmm. these 10 guys that we've lived with and we've labored with and we've loved and blessed and, and they've blessed us, right? Mm-hmm. And now they're, they move on. So mm-hmm. it's a real thing. It's, yeah, it's a gift. Yeah. Does it feel like it went fast? Oh, bros. It feels like it, it's gone so fast. It, it, and it, just to know that like, they've come such a long way and they're, they've grown so much and they all know it and they've experienced mm-hmm. so much grace. And, um, and this, this year is my third year and um, what's really beautiful is that th- this is like the first year I've like that God has blessed me with a team like you guys, Father Gabriel, Father Brother Colby, Father Glenn. Like we just have a great team here, right? And so um, I just feel like this was a particularly blessed year because God moved a lot of pieces in place mm. where we could really love these guys, care for them, a lot of joy, a lot of growth, a lot of suffering, all the good right ways. And so um, I just love it because I'm just like, I feel like God's like done something in our friary to be like, yeah, this is our responsibility to love these men and mm. to form them. And I feel like just so blessed by, by the friar team here to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't do, formation doesn't happen like by myself. Like I can't do it like that. And so the gift of my friar brothers to, to do this together. Yeah. I think we've left it all on the field, right? Like we've done our best and you just kind of, I drop them off the novitiate. It was funny today when Father Gabriel Emmanuel was like, well, can you just drop them off and come home? I'm like, yeah, I don't like, like there was something like, I gotta it drop really them off. I gotta, that way. Yeah. I gotta like show them their room. We kind of like, right. <laughs> we have a whole hour together yeah. and dinner. And, it's like taking your kids to college. Yeah. You're like, not just going to take the car and drive off. Yeah. Like, like, or like go, drive, yeah. leave them on the street. Like, well, see you later. Yeah, you know, right, I'm like, like, no, th- I, this is like an afternoon event. You know, yeah. <laughs> remember that time um, it was coming to Posh and see whether the, the dad came, flew had his flight out the same day and he came in and just kind of passed his son off to you in the chapel, like in front of the father. And he said, father, I give my, give my son to you now, father. That was beautiful, but it's he the like, same he flew in and flew out the same day. He was mm-hmm. from Chicago. He like, we took him on a tour. We had lunch together 
he's like, hey, can we just go to the chapel? I'd like to bless you and bless my son. So he like gave his son off to me. And then he's like, all right. Then he got back in the car. Like we took him to the airport and it was like the same day, but it was like, beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Fatherhood passing on. Yeah. It's a real thing. No, I don't, it's going to be, I like these guys. It's going to be weird to see them go. Yeah. You and know? it happens all quickly. There's no transition. There's no, yeah. they're just all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah. Like, oh. And we we're pretty intense guys and busy guys. So we just like kind of move on with life. And so, um, but it's a real thing. We have like a, a, just basically a month and then we pre- prepare to do it all over again. Mm-hmm. And the unique, unique thing about Pachinti is, is that like, it's like, maybe this is a funny thing, but it's like freshman football, you know, it's just like, they don't know anything. And so it's not just like, oh, okay, these guys are moving up. Like, okay, they have a general sense of what's going on. But when you come to Pachinti, like, it's like, you, you feel your fatherhood in a really beautiful way. Because like you're teaching these guys from day one, like mm-hmm. everything about consecrated life, religious life, about their identity. Communal, I mean, communal life. Communal life, you know, had just from the simple things to the big things. So yeah. it's like a really funny thing because we're like, you can't, you just don't assume anything. Yeah. So there's a beautiful part of that where you're like, huh, like we start over. You notice they're gone when you're like, who's cooking tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Who's, who's setting up for holy hour? <laughs> Weird. Uh, is uh, it, why is the bathroom not? Oh, oh yeah. yeah the yeah. Are, <laughs> you realize how much the Pashans do when they move yeah. out. You're like, hey, especially 10 guys. Yeah. You can give their like force a, of. Yeah. For a half day, you can set them loose in the fryer <laughs> and everything gets cleaned. And you're like, whoa. Like, like, you go back to leading prayer and you're like, God, we haven't I'm, done this in a while. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, congratulations. Good job. Thank you, fathers, you did it. brothers. You did it. You did a good job. 10 entered, 10, 10, 10, or 10 remain. Which is a unique thing. And uh, they're all. Yeah, so such good dudes. Thank yeah, you to all of our parents who no. did the, the brunt of the labor getting him to this point. There was good soil. Exactly. There was good soil. Yeah, so good yeah. vocation team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so today what we're talking about, Father Anderson has just sort of revealed to us the heart of a father a little bit. Yeah. What he rejoices in, rejoicing in the his sons. And uh, I think let's keep on that thing. <laughs> let's keep on that thing. Let's, do it. Let's talk about I mean, how, wait, go ahead. No, let's talk about how Jesus rejoices, rejoices. what he rejoices in. So, we've so been, we're looking at the heart of Jesus. Do you want to? No, I, I was just excited. I, this this, some, this means a it. lot to me. But this is real quick before. <laughs> I'm excitable. <laughs> before we go on, <laughs> is you can tell like there's like a, a, a certain levy toss, a certain like like happiness as they're preparing to go. Like there's like the, the, the giggles in the chapel. You know what I mean? Oh like there gosh. is, there's just like, there's like a, there's an excitement. It's really beautiful the other day that, they just couldn't get it together for night prayer. <laughs> and our, our, our prayer leader man is just like getting every word wrong. And then he like, he's, he's, he's laughing and everyone else starts laughing, tries to start a song and he's just, and everyone's just happy and laughing. And this, it was like a really beautiful yeah, totally. thing. Um, yeah. It was like a, you know, I, have you guys seen, I've only seen this scene. I used to work at a movie theater and when Lord of the Rings was that? out and one of the final yeah. scenes of one of the Lord of the Rings movies, which I haven't seen, is all of the the little hobbits doing a dance where they're all like happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's it's what like, you're thinking about. It's like a manly version of that. <laughs> it's like that's a awesome. stud version of that. I don't know hobbits if that's a, doing a dance. I haven't seen it, but I feel like our Lord of the Rings people will appreciate some sort there of you go. with a slight kind of jab at it. But all the and then the friars in the back are like smiling. With, they weren't quite laughing with them, but smiling with them. And then you guys ran off with the song. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So this is, this is, again, we're just, we're, this is, we're looking at how, what, what, um, how a father rejoices, what Jesus rejoices in. And right. So we're looking at the heart of God um, because there's salvation in the truth that we find in the heart of God. Like it's, it, these truths don't just inform us, they save us. Um, And so like, what is it, what is it that Jesus rejoices in? We've gone through compassion. We've got through anger, which made father Angelus a little anxious. Um, And (laughs) And now, uh, and now we're going into like, what is it that, that makes Jesus rejoice? And I think we'll begin with this. Like there's, there's a, there's a couple of, of, of insights that were given into this into what makes the heart of God rejoice, but it's a really privileged and special moment. It's in, it's in both Matthew and Luke's gospel. And it's this, this space where Jesus invites us into his own prayer with the father and sort of like mm. opens the door and, and lets us peek inside it. Like it, he, it's almost like, you know, like he opens like this, his side and lets us see what's going on there. And so this is, it's Matthew 11, right? And it says, uh, this is one, this is one version of it that I copy and pasted. Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. 
and no one knows the son except the father and, to, and no one knows the father except the son and anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him. So that's, that's the gospel, right? This is a special, special, like really intimate insight into Jesus's own relationship with his father. And this is what I'm going to, I'm going to read a quote from our man. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Rasmolev Americacus, fire of mercy, heart of the word. <laughs> Volume one. Page 707. Um, so this is referring to Jesus has not asked us to follow him to where the father is in this, in this moment. He simply opened his heart in our presence. And there we have seen the father. I just think that is beautiful and true. It's just this, this moment of intimacy where he opens his own heart and inside lets us see his own relationship with the father. Go run, run with this. He doesn't do this very often. And so mm. when Jesus opens his heart, he turns to the father, when he looks up, we just gotta pay attention. I just think it's so intimate and beautiful. Like he turns to the father, I give you praise father. And, you know, and again, everything that follows is so important. Jesus is, is really like focusing us here, but like, I just wanna, I just want to like stop at the, the father's, or excuse me, the son looking up at his father and, and just delighting, I give you praise. Like, and here's the thing, like, what does this show us about Jesus is that he, he's just with his father. The Jesus is just a son and he's seen and like, he's not alone. Like there's just something really beautiful about like he, he's showing us, he's like, this is not just one time where he's like, oh, like, oh, the father's here now. Like he's giving us, he's opening his heart that, to this interior experience that always is. Mm. Right. And this is the, this is like what we have to like to dive deep in here. Like he's giving us a glimpse of what's always true for him is that he's living in the relationship with the father. He's seen, he's loved. The father is attentive to him and he rejoices in this. Like he's a son who delights in his father's presence. Like who just, um, there's a great, there's a great um, image of, of this. Um, it's, 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 it's a, I think it's entitled like the fatherhood of God. And it's actually a, a, a father and son. And the son is, is like playing on the floor with like, uh, I don't know, like toys or like blocks or something. And the father's looking over his shoulder and the face is just like delighting in his son, looking at him from a distance, right? Like it's not just this one time, but the father's revealing to us his delight in his son, just sitting on the floor playing, right? This is what always is with the father and the son. Jesus is saying like, look at this. And what this does to Jesus's own heart, like father, I give you praise because you are my father and you are good and you see me and you always see me. And you are, you just give me, me life and you give everyone life. And this is what a son is. He, he just delights that the father is real and he's always seen and he's always son. He's never alone. He doesn't have to worry. He doesn't have to be anxious. And here particularly, he just gives the father praise for the way that, that he, he, he gives everyone life and what he does to reveal things and, and bring life, like all that. I just want to focus first on the fact that like Jesus is showing us into a part of his heart that always is he is son and the father's always looking upon him with love. And he just delights in this. He just mm -hmm. wells up like, this is who I am. Like, look, I forget what gospel it is, but after when the disciples say, Jesus teach us to pray. Um, and one of the gospels is because they saw him praying and he comes back and then they have this desire and this like, complete request to be like, Lord, can I pray like that? Can mm -hmm. I experience like that? It's like, this is what they saw. They saw Jesus rejoicing. They saw the, the peace and the confidence of a son before the father. And they saw whatever that interaction was like. And then now they, now they're, the, the apostles are kind of like, oh my gosh, like whatever is going on there, I want, you know? And so it's beautiful because I, I, we should count at some point how many times it's like, there's, there's this moment where you like, he looks up or he references his father. It's, it's, it's less than lot. five. Oh, definitely less than five. I think yeah. like, yeah, three. But they're privileged insights into Jesus's own experience of being a son and, mm -hmm. and being in a relationship with his father. And so it should draw us in, it should capture us. But um, this is the kind of thing you're like, man, I got to spend a little more time with that. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean yeah. for me? And I think that's beautiful. And I think it's well said is like, it's, it, this is, there's only three-ish times that we're given this insight explicitly, but this is the constant experience of Jesus, right? And so there's... um. I believe I, if I read him correctly, Erasmus Leib Americak is sort of um, taking this yes, father. It's, it's like um, the English doesn't quite maybe do it justice or kind of a, a cursory kind of quick reading, 
But it's almost like this is the amen to the fathers rending the heavens and saying, behold, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, mm. right? Which happens at the baptism of Jesus, but also the transfiguration, right? There's these two moments in, in sort of scriptures where there's the revelation, the sort of breaking through, piercing of the veil of what I believe is, is, this is the same. This is the father's constant word to his son. And his, and, and his son's constant response is like this, yes, father, this like, this, this great here. amen, this rejoicing in the father. And this is this mutual constant back and forth. The To help again, to kind of like contextualize it and, and make it maybe a little bit more experiential is I think one of the, the, the looks that I'm aware of that people generally experience like very intimately is like when at like a wedding, when, when dad and bride are coming down mm. To present uh, what the bride to to the groom, and everyone like wants to see if like the groom's crying in his face, and it's like it's one of the most beautiful sort of looks of Exchanges, love. Exchanges, yeah. And right, I think that there's something of this. It's like, um, and again, the the analogy limps, but there's this constantly sort of deep, profound, loving admiration between father and son, and then and then from son to to bride, his church, right? So what 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 Jesus experiences in the father, he also it's it's also how he looks with us. And so there is, there is something it's for beautiful. us. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. There is something for us because, right, like it's the invitation is the invitation into Jesus' own sonship. Mm. And so it is this invitation and, and, to, and it's, it's the fruit of a journey, but, but the experience of this constant, um, that constant gift of this loving look. Um, yeah. And I think that's, again, that's what I, I believe what Jesus experienced, but it's also what he wants to offer and invite us into. Yeah, and and I think it's beautiful is that we when we live in this 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 gaze in this relationship, we we delight and we experience the Father's blessing, and then it gives us confidence, right? Because later on, one of the other moments is at the death death of Lazarus, Jesus comes before the tomb, and it just again it's one of the few. He says he looks up to his Father, and he looks they they they're in this place of intimacy again. Like the Son knows he has a good Father who is the Lord of life and who's a who has who has lordship over life and death, mm-hmm. right? And this is the fatherhood of God at his best. Jesus looks up and says, Father, like, you know, I know you hear me, you always hear me. And for the sake of your name, for, this, for the glory of your name, he, then he, so he, he looks up then he looks down at the tomb and, and for the glory of your name, he says, Lazarus, I tell you, come out, right? I just love this because the, if we live in this relationship and allow Jesus to teach us to live in the confidence, of, of having a loving father, we rejoice always at the big and small things. Then we gives us confidence to face death, to face, face darkness. And, and Jesus is like, what does he do? First, he looks up, father, you hear me, you always hear me. And then he, that's the, what gives him the power. Like, I just love that that's another, that's another unique place where he looks up to the father and, and then the father's able to live his power to, to conquer death. And it's just, again, it's the same place. I look up, my father, you're here, you love me. And that's all that matters here. And so that they will know that you are basically real. And for the glory of your name, Lazarus, come out, rise from the dead. I just, I just love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. And it's <laughs> it just a, in, a, in a true sense. And like, what are we trying to do here? We're trying, how do we live in that place? How do we wrestle in the midst of life? How do we wrestle in the midst of relationships and responsibilities and work and play and all that kind of stuff to live in this place? And how, I mean, let's be honest about like just an assessment of like, do I, how much of the day do I live in this place where I can honestly stop and say, Father, like, you see me, you like me. you love me and you see me. And, and, and this, this movement of which is natural, which is just the, the gratitude for so many gifts and the gratitude for, I, I think part of it though, is the challenges that we get discouraged because somehow we think that we live most of our life out, life out of the, out of this place, like disconnected from this place. And our sin and our weakness and our distraction in the world does that. That is totally true. But the, the, the gift of living together as brothers, the lift of living as, as a married couple who's trying to be faithful with their kids or having good friends around or, or whatever community or communion we are into is that we wanna keep each other before this place. And we want to keep each other constantly asking the question, how is the father pouring himself out? How is he blessing? How is he caring for me? So I can constantly be looking up and say, father, look at what you've done. Like father innocent this morning, but like he's looking around and seeing these guys put on their habits. Like father, like, look at this. And you, your reference to the sisters earlier and you're like, we all have these moments. You're like, whoa, but that shouldn't be kind of like one in every once in a while kind of moment. 
Mm-hmm. How can we live, have a, have a heart that's full of recollection and full of grace to see differently and to enter into that space? Like, yeah, I think it's the, I think that's the invitation. I think that's the point. And that's what maybe Jesus is trying to teach us. The exactly. best place is, this is what we call prayer. Uh, can you say a full sentence one more time? That what is the, this place? Oh, sorry. So this, um, yeah, thank you. That wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be, uh, Dismiss. It was like there's something that's just yeah. Well, no, and I realized I was saying something super intense in like five words, <laughs> and you were taking a drink. Um, away from your microphone. Sorry. It was really <laughs> um, I just think that that's the, the continual experience is that this place of of knowing how the Father looks on the Son and the Son looks on the Father is the place we're called. That's why I said this is what's called prayer. Is that when we realize we fight for the relationship and we realize that this, there's access to this relationship with a loving and good father in the person of Jesus in the fullness of the Holy Spirit all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was just saying, that's a good definition of prayer. Jesus is looking up and he's in relationship. And that's what I, I would say, that's what the simplicity of prayer is. I'm not alone. God, God is here. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trust him and live in that relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and perhaps this, so if you haven't listened to the last episode, maybe you, you should can listen to it. <laughs> there's, there's somewhat maybe of a tie-in, right? Like this is what, as you said, this is what a house of prayer looks like. There's this this back and forth between father and son of this, my beloved son. And like, yes, father, this 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 kind of reciprocal, reciprocated love. Um, and, and it was right. It was because of like, uh, because of the sin and the hustle and the bustle and the self will that people were kind of, uh, they were, they were breaking from and preventing others from experiencing this, this kind of loving experience and this, this intimacy. And I think that's part of, again, the Lord's anger was at the service of purifying this to free it, to free up, particularly in that gospel, the the weak and the the lame and the blind, so that they could come into this loving yeah, beautiful. embrace. And it is interesting that even um, even here, right, the following verses are come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Like there is um, the the just the the it is the fruit of the Lord's relationship with the Father that He wants to invite us into it and to heal us and to to bring us into it. Like it, like the relationship that Jesus, so Jesus opens his heart and lets us look in. And it's not for us just to, it's not just like, oh, look and see, this is beautiful. It's come, come and experience for yourselves. And we're not called to be spectators. Right. The intimacy is the invitation, yeah. right? And it has to become a deeply personal matter for us. Great. Um, maybe just to kind of like make a slight transition to flesh it out. I do think that there's something really beautiful here and, and worth going and probably even, you know, at at the at the Eucharist, right? Like one of the the first thing in the Euchar the the Eucharistic Eucharist the what's it called the Eucharistic the, prayer the no 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 the institution narratives the institution narratives right there's there's the pattern of Jesus looks and gives thanks blesses is can we see in that giving thanks like what's he, what's happening is here like totally. as, as 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 Jesus raises his eyes to his Father to give thanks there's this again there's this deep intimate experience of love and exchange of love, not just some routine, like, Hey, thanks. Um, and then he gives like he, in, in his response to the fullness that he's received from the father is the fullness of himself, which is what we share in, in the Eucharist. And so there is something here of Matthew 11, which we are all invited into by participating in Jesus' own sonship, each and every Eucharist, as we celebrate the, the giving of thanks, the, the most beautiful giving of thanks. The mass becomes this really concrete place where this intimacy is revealed. Right. Yeah. And, and, kind of allowing, um, especially as priests, but also as, as baptized Catholics, when you enter into the mass, how can this be like, a, uh, yeah, like found me in a, in a deeper place in this, in this revelation, mm-hmm. in this experience of relationship. Um, again, I think there's a temptation to go through the motions. There's a temptation to make it quick. There's a temptation just to kind of like not be in a place where I experience that. And how do we change that? Well, we just begin again mm-hmm. and we just, receive a grace and a different truth. And I want to, and, and labor in, in this space to say, Jesus, I want to, I want to experience this particular Holy mass in a, in a way where I enter a new space, the space, your heart between your, you and your father. Would it be too much a, do you want to go? Well, I was just going to, I was just going to say that um, I'm my heart. Like I, this is maybe the insight to a priest of a, of a heart of a priest, but um, I'm pretty, often emotionally moved in Eucharistic prayer one. And that's like the most ancient 
uh, Eucharistic prayer of the church, right? Gives a really 30 second quick explanation of what Eucharistic prayers so are. So uh, thank you, sorry. Um, just the part of the mass where, where we were after the, the Sanctus, where we, um, where we enter into the, to the, the actual, the consecration of the Eucharist. There's the, the church gives us several options. There's, there's four main options and often, you know, they they all have a different personality and, and a different kind of focus. Um, but Eucharistic prayer one is the, the, the longer one and the most ancient one. And that's the one, if people, if this triggers some, some, um, some memory where we name a lot of the saints, we name the saints and the martyrs and, and it's just really beautiful. Um, but what's beautiful, that's the only Eucharistic prayer at the beginning of right before the institution narrative of like, take, this is my body, take, this is my blood. It says that Jesus looks, it raises his eyes to heaven and to you, to you, O God is almighty father gives thanks, takes the bread, right? So it's actually like in, like, this is the most ancient prayer of the church where what people would have received probably from their early church fathers. They actually have this moment where, and it says like, when we learn the mass for the priest, it says that we are, we are to, to do the action. And so to, and to, to you, mighty father, he raised his eyes, you know, like, and you're supposed, the priest is supposed to look up. Mm-hmm. And I just get moved with emotion because of this. Like, this is the moment Jesus took bread and he looked up and he gave thanks to his father. And as a priest, we're standing in that place and we're like, Father, you are here. You are good. You are, you, like, this is the way you love us. So I just I appreciate that perspective of the Eucharist. And, and it's just beautiful that the church actually tells the priest to do this, to remind us of the moment. Mm-hmm. There's a quick Eucharistic prayer, one joke, or not joke, story. Please, here's the old Eucharistic prayer true, zinger. True. <laughs> um, the, uh, I was a, ordained a priest for a couple of months and I was at a focus uh, recruitment weekend, which is when you kind of do the sermon of, of like men and women who are thinking about becoming future missionaries. And um, you kind of celebrate one night and part of the, like the last night was like this trivia night. So I was on this team and my team was like super into it. And of like, course, like pretty, pretty, well, they, well, I was like not that super <laughs> into it. Some of the folks were very into it. And one of the questions was how many saints are named in Eucharistic <laughs> prayer one. So everybody looks at me and the priest and I'm like, I'm, I'm like still like a, a baby priest. I'm very, very baby <laughs> priest. I've maybe prayed it one time. So I'm like, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Clemens, Cyprian, Chrysogonus, John Paul, Lawrence. Cosmos and Damien, Lawrence, Chris, whatever. But it was like, and so I kind of went through it a couple of times and I was like, I don't know, I guess, I don't know, 24, something like that. There's a lot more than 24. And when the answer came out, everybody looked at me with utter disappointment. Yeah. Where were we on that one, Father uh, Mark Mary? I, w- I was like, oh, we got this. We got the priest at our table. And I totally, <laughs> I totally awesome. ruined oh. it. So anyway. You, that, you probably still didn't even know how many saints are there. <laughs> do you? It's like, no. it's like a lot. It's like 35. Something like it's that. a lot. It's a lot. That's funny. And sometimes people they can take the option of doing like that's it, It's an option whether to say all the saints or not. I've never seen anyone not take the option to say all of them. I do that on non- non feast days. If I'll use you in uh, Eucharistic prayer one on a non solemnity, you'll I'll, take the option I'll not take to say the, the saints to, to get simpler. Yeah, it's beautiful. If, if the saint is named in the canon, you got to do it, right? Good I mean, you, you should. I think so. Feast day. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> um, but, so I don't think this is sentimentality. I think this could be an invitation to prayer, right? During, during the mass, there's the elevation. This is my body given for you. And the priest raises, raises the host. And I think that you we can see this kind of like sharing in this love as, as, as the father is beholding his son present in the most blessed sacrament, present in the Eucharist, that there's this exchange between them. But then also there's, there's bride and bridegroom, the church looking at uh, the church being the bride, looking at the bridegroom, um, the son. And I think that there is something to this, like of this mm-hmm. Matthew 11, which we're invited to share in each and every mass during Love this. It. So my invitation, perhaps, I don't think it's sentimentality, right? No, I think there's no, no, something no. to this is to, to our listeners, perhaps um, during mass, like at the, tra- at that, that moment, the elevation, we are certainly elevating and offering with the son, our whole lives to the father, but in exchange, there is this, this gaze of love. And I think there is something of an invitation to, to sit with that and pray with that and engage your imagination in it. Absolutely. I think, and I think the invitation from the beginning of talking about this, the relationship with Jesus and his father was, is to recognize that the mass is a privileged place for this. And and we will long to pray differently. We mm-hmm. long to enter into it. Like we don't want to just go through the motions. So, to, to, so you know, letting letting as the Eucharist is elevated, letting us letting our hearts and our eyes like look up and, and experience it in a different way. Absolutely. The I think I think we'll just kind of say this kind of to note it, and then to invite our listeners to maybe pray with it. I, I found it very interesting that when I 
I did a Google search for rejoice or Thanksgiving or things like that on, uh, on the old internets. Um, <laughs> there's some to help figure out where, where this happens. And it's in uh, Luke 15, which is just kind of like the, if you will, like the, the series of mercy gospels where it's the lost, lost coin, lost sheep. And then the prodigal son is that in each of those, there's, there's a moment of, of rejoicing. And I think that that gives us a particular insight that, cause it's not a, it's not a word that's used a ton uh, by, by Jesus or in reference to Jesus. Um, but, but there's like, there's this constant like rejoicing, this privileged place of rejoicing when, uh, when the father found, finds what was lost. Mm-hmm. And that which was dead comes back to life. Um, yeah, that was. Do you guys do you have anything to add to that? I just think it's beautiful. Again, we're if we're talking about the heart of Jesus, and mm-hmm. Jesus is telling us stories. He's he's like just revealing his heart to us, and this is it's beautiful. Yeah, I guess maybe he just rejo- like he rejoices in saving us, and mm-hmm. he rejoices in our returning home, right? And that's what the the pro- the, the father to the prodigal son throws this huge celebration because my son who is dead is alive. He was lost this is found. Um, and it's, it's like, yeah. So just with, um, maybe it's an invitation with our whole hearts to, to return to the Lord and to let him save us again, because it's not, I don't, I don't know that there's a place of rejoicing where it's like, oh yeah, Hey, look, you did it. You kicked butt. You rocked it. You did the mm-hmm. super things like, oh, you let, not that, but, but it's like, you, I, I saved you. Like you let me save you again. There's something really beautiful and privileged about that. And it just takes it back to the beginning. It, the anger is I re, he and, and rejoices because he can put us back in mm-hmm. relationship with his father. And he gets it and he allows, he rejoices because he experiences it so beautifully that he wants us to experience that. Um, and so that's the image of the sheep. That's the image of the prodigal son because he's like, oh, like this is all I want for them is to live in this place. And I, and I want to, and it moves my heart. The fruit of that is like this beautiful gift of joy. This might be a stretch, but just go with me and we can kind of work this out as we go. <laughs> um, but, it, but what my heart like kind of moves is moved to say now is that there's like the scriptures, particularly the gospels give us like moments from the beginning to the end to, to look to the father and rejoice. Now they're going to look kind of different, but like, I just think of our lady, like my, I, after mass daily, like I, I say like the first two words of the, the Magnificat, like my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Like, like our ladies, like I just want our, my lady, my lady. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> um, I just want our lady to teach me. Like, like I want to, like, I want my heart to rejoice in my savior. Like, like teach me how to do that as we've mm. received the Eucharist, like the most perfect gift we could ever receive. Like my spirit rejoices. Like Mary, teach me that. Like, what's that like? You know, and so like at the nativity, when Mary's holding Jesus, like I think this rejoicing is happening in her own heart, Jesus's own life, right? Looking to the father. But here's the thing, like, what was it like for Jesus on the cross? Now this is the stretch, but but like there's there's a moment of like, into your hands, father, I commend my spirit. Mm. Like there's there's, this is the most tragic place of suffering and death. And this is where it all kind of culminates, but, and Jesus has went the distance to experience the isolation and the darkness and the sin, but his words teach us. And I think we're actually getting into some of those later, um, later episodes. But his, the point is, is that like, he doesn't say he rejoices. I don't want to be overly sen- sentimental. Like, oh, this is great. Into your father, into your hands, father. But he does turn and he, and he addresses his father, like into your hands, father, I commend my spirit. Now he will tell, he will, he will say, father, like, why, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And there's a whole thing on that, which we'll get to, but but there's a turning and, and like, I just think it can be comforting to us because he's still in relationship. And it looks a lot different from all, maybe a lot of other moments, but he is fighting for the truth that he can look to his father and his father's real. And he's digging deep to trust that on our, on our behalf. Mm. And I just think there's something beautiful. Like, yes, father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Like, I trust you. I love you. And I just give everything to you. Yeah. So it, like from beginning to end, like there's this, there's just this posture. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful way to flesh it out because we want to make sure like the Thanksgiving of Jesus to his father has, has like teeth. It has bite. It has, it has this edge. It's not just like, hi, you know, it's not just like this, like very sort of sentimental, mm-hmm. very Like, happy, oh, this is so nice. Yo, and like, this doesn't matter. I, no. I see you seeing me. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not and just like, oh, that. like, it's okay. Like, like this doesn't matter. No, it absolutely does. Yeah. But, but this is, this is the fullness of, it's not just with words by the, like, so Jesus is giving thanks because he's received everything from his father and the fullness of his thanks is returning everything to the father, which 
kind of has this culminating point of into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. And he's teaching right. us, even though it's hard, I right. think he's mm-hmm. teaching us. So that also, right, each mass that's tied into it, it's like, yeah, I see you seeing that's me, you I'm experiencing it. the gaze, but I'm also into your hands, I commend my spirit. I've received everything from you, I return everything to you. Absolutely. 100%. Beautiful. Come on, bro. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know it's all right. Who needs Father PT? Actually, I miss we you, miss, PT. Yeah, we like Father PT. <laughs> um, we'll close with a prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, we love you, we thank you. For looking upon us with love, we pray, Lord, that we may hear again you speak these words of truth over our life, that our lives, that we are your beloved sons and daughters, and that in response, we can respond with Jesus with this proclamation of, of amen, um, that we love you. And may we return to you may, all of our lives. We have received everything from you. May we, may we return uh, everything to you by your grace and for your glory. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. amen. Father, amen. Son. Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of um, podcast comments. So happy to have Father Angelus back. Exclamation point. Thank you. How many exclamation points? Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Interesting. Question mark. The commenter, (laughs) Mrs. Montgomery. (laughs) My mother. (laughs) Not really, but Animal Planet. That was the the name. I don't know how you guys create these things. The other one was uh, the best podcast quotation or what's it called parentheses after abiding together LOL, <laughs> which received a that was from nurse mary which received a response the next week the best podcast just that i tell you i like poco poco over abiding together <laughs> oh they're a little, response, back a little back and forth i like that yeah and we a sister miriam and sister or sister michelle, <laughs> sister, sister michelle. <laughs> they're the best and heather and heather I we, love, we yeah, love abiding we're... together we do and uh, they're very good to us. Uh, if you'd like to continue to, if you'd like to check out the video, Spirit video, uh, YouTube, Spirit Juice, Studios. Poco Poco. If you'd like to support the podcast, for which we'd be very grateful, that would be at spiritjuice.org forward slash Poco Poco. Thanks, everybody. You guys God, are, yeah, I want to say God bless you, you and we're but, praying for you all. <laughs> that was the cute end. You just, yeah. Usually you just say blah, blah, blah. Okay, come follow me. Come we'll follow see you. God see you next week. <laughs> Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way, hey, hey Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love That life is short That all will be well And I know 